Hi, it's Nick Haig, the vicar of Fernhurst, Lynchmere and Campbellsdale here in West Sussex and it's Easter morning. Happy Easter. I'm going to start with a story. Once there was a young boy about eight or nine who went to the Lake District with his family on holiday. And as part of the holiday they went for a cruise on Derwent Water, that beautiful lake near Keswick. The cruise on one of these pleasure boats that had a glass cabin at the back and then an open section at the bows where you could sit in the open air and enjoy the views. And the boy, well, he was quite excited and sat as far forward as he could, right in the bows, just to enjoy the experience. And his attention was drawn by a small varnished wooden door right there in the bows. It had the word private painted neatly upon it. And as the journey went on, he couldn't help looking at it and wondering and wondering. And so, well, you know what he did. But then he slammed the door shut immediately and looked around anxiously to see if anyone had seen what he'd done. And he never forgot the incident. What made him slam it shut? Well, there was a beautifully painted picture inside which was so vividly engraved into his memory that I, I mean he, could draw a picture of it many years later. And here's the picture of what he saw. Jaws have a fascination for us, don't they? All sorts of doors. If it's a shut door that we haven't encountered before, we wonder well, what might be behind it? What secrets might it hold? If it's an open door, we can't resist a look in, a peek round, perhaps nervously to step over the threshold, see what we might find. Doors are perhaps portals into other experiences, other worlds, and they've been used many times in stories. Think of the Narnia stories and that wardrobe, the portal into another world entirely. And the Easter story is about a door. I'm going to read from John's Gospel, the account of the resurrection. It's from John chapter 20, verses 1 to 18. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at his feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They've taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. 
She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Doors are fascinating things and we want to know what's behind them or we want to go through them. But this particular door, the tomb, the stone that had been rolled across the entrance, as was the custom in those days, well... Nobody wanted to go through that one, because they all knew what was behind there. At least they thought they knew. Nobody wanted to open tombs, just as we don't really, because, well, what's inside a tomb is not very nice. And yet, this door had been opened for all the world to see. And what did it hold? Well, nothing. <laughs> Jesus had been resurrected. He had gone. This door, this tomb doorway, had actually become, unlike all the fictional stories, had actually become a doorway into a new world. The rolling away of the stone actually signalled a new era, a new world being opened to humankind, a world which meant that this world could never be the same because a new reality has opened up. A new possibility, new things for all of us to explore. And the way through and the way into this world is through the resurrection of Christ. So with the other disciples and with Mary, we bend down to look in and we wonder at this doorway, this great doorway that has been rolled away to open this new world to us. And we wonder, should we go in? What might it entail? We're cautious, perhaps we're fearful. Fearful of what it might mean for us. Commitment or, well, changing. Sometimes we think, well, we're struggling with unbelief. Is this really true? Can we really trust that this is the way to a new reality? A new way of being where we live Yes, in this world, but also in heaven as well. The door to heaven is here and now. It's not pie in the sky when you die. As somebody once said, it's steak on the plate while you wait. <laughs> it's a way of being that is open to all. How do we go through this door? Well, the way through is through God's love. Christ himself takes us through this door. Christ's sacrificial love meant that the doorway is open to all. And with him we can experience the fullness of heaven. Christ's new resurrection body was one that could exist both in this world and in heaven simultaneously. It was recognisably him and yet Something was different, which is why Mary Magdalene didn't immediately recognise him. This is the way that's offered to us. And it's an interesting way of looking at things, isn't it? Doorways, because at the moment we all feel enclosed by doors. We can't go out except for our one permitted bit of exercise every day or to work if there's no way of working at home or to care for someone or to the shops or whatever it is, but we're severely restricted. We feel, to be honest, a bit imprisoned. But with this door open to us, this door of the empty tomb, this way to a new way of being, it's, well, it's not a way of being trapped that we need fear. The way to God's love, this dual citizenship, heaven and earth, this promise of fulfilment, this promise of being, well, altogether different as people, as God, with God, we explore who he would like us to be. 
is, well, waiting for us. It's open. The invitation is there. And that's why Easter morning is so wonderful. And nobody is going to say when you look to go through Hello Nosy. They're going to say, come in. We've been expecting. I'm going to finish this reflection with some music. This is a song that Anita, my wife, wrote, well, about 20 years ago, I think. And we recorded. We've actually done three albums of, of our stuff. And that's sort of part of her life before I entered the church. But we re-recorded one of them. And it's called Kyrie Eleison, which is Greek for Lord Have Mercy. And it's also called Empty Broken, Here I Stand. It came out of a time of personal difficulty, a time of, well, miscarriage, loss, all sorts of problems we were facing. And we decided that in the midst of it, we were going to trust God. We were going to have belief that we had gone through that door and that things were going to be just fine in God's hands. Listen to the words. I'll put some pictures up while it plays and think about it. Even though things are tough, we trust God and we rejoice in the freedom he has bought for us all. God bless you.
voice that calms my fears. Here we are.